On November 17, 2019, China recorded its first case of the coronavirus disease. And by December 2019, there were substantial cases recorded across the globe. On January 30, 2020, COVID-19 was declared a public health emergency and the World Health Organization on March 11, 2020, declared the coronavirus disease a pandemic. Now, a day after the declaration, Ghana recorded its first cases of COVID-19. Now, as part of measures to curtail the spread of COVID-19, Ghana, on 30th March 2020, settled on a lockdown. In this documentary, I will be bringing you up to speed on events that have unfolded since the dreadful announcement and how far we have come in our fight against the unseen enemy, COVID-19. When the world woke up to the coronavirus pandemic, Ghanaians only followed the news as another international story. Little did we know that Ghana was shortly going to receive its fair share of the negative impact. On the 12th of March 2020, Ghana finally recorded her first two confirmed cases of COVID-19 after a series of hoax announcements on social media and this will clearly mark the beginning of a new way of life. And then now thinking of how to mobilize the news team to go out there to bring the story to viewers and listeners and all that. It was a very difficult and challenging task. We have educated the drivers on it. So now we have started using this uh, uh, claims for our, our hands. Well, first of all, I don't want to panic, so um, I'm not like rushing to buy hand sanitizers and all, although, like, I have one right here. Oh, nice. <laughs> just in case. Yeah, but I don't think anybody should like panic buy a sanitizer. Just like, it's basically like personal hygiene being upgraded, just to, like keep yourself safe. COVID 19 hit the world unannounced, and this meant various countries would have to deploy drastic measures on how to deal with what had now become a pandemic of global proportions. With scanty information regarding its mode of transmission, Ghana was not left out in the confusion of how to respond to this pandemic. The government of Ghana, led by President Takufadu, however, arrested the situation by engaging the citizenry regularly and providing information regarding the pandemic. At the time of my last broadcast, some six days ago, Ghana had recorded 21 confirmed cases of infections, with virtually all the cases being imported. I took the step to close all our borders, and I ordered a mandatory quarantine and testing of all the 1,030 persons who arrived at the airport at the time of the announcement till the day the borders were closed. With the case numbers rising, stricter measures had to be deployed to curtail the spread of the virus. News had started trickling in on lockdown measures that had been undertaken by various nations, which sparked the debate on whether or not Ghana should institute a lockdown. On the 28th of March 2020, the President of the Republic, Nana Kufwado, in a rather emotional address to the state, announced definite measures. The much-anticipated lockdown has just arrived.
even though it may be said that the number of our infections is still relatively low, if we act now purposefully, we have a chance of preventing an escalation of our numbers. So, effective 1 a.m. on Monday, 30th March, some 48 hours from now, I have imposed, pursuant to the powers granted the President of the Republic under the Imposition of Restrictions Act, 2020 Act 1012, Restrictions on movement of persons in the greater Accra metropolitan area, Gama, which includes Awutu Senya East Municipality, and the greater Kumasi metropolitan area and contiguous districts for a period of two weeks, subject to review. The two-week lockdown will subsequently be extended by another one week, making it three weeks in all. The ambiguity that was associated with how we were going to live our lives within the two-week lockdown period sparked varying degrees of restlessness. Ghanaians were going to face the longest and loneliest two-week period ever. The nights became darker and quieter. Our streets missed the company of human and vehicular traffic and laid bare as it had to face the sun directly on a daily basis. Access to food and basic needs became a real struggle for the lower income and less endowed communities, a situation which then prompted the government and other private sector players to intervene. But how far was this going to suffice? <laughs> I just came to the market this morning to buy one or two things. I had wanted to buy Gary. Gary usually we buy it for seven cities. Uh, that's for long car, how they, uh, they sell it for seven cities. Now I just asked two or three people. They are selling Gary for 150, I mean 50 cities. Some are even selling it for. Uh, 20 cities and all that, so we can't even buy them. Chocobi and the one pin wa one pin. Your fire, Jimmy, he had been on my pipe. Me, back on my biscuit, never for me. Nina Tower forward, the rest at Eliza. Nina Neko, he had a rest at Eliza. On the rest at Eliza, Nini, Yene, back on near Columbia bar for me. Ni kamila afonu na ba o mo ba yele oko e mo so sha ta ba da yo mi ona o mo na ja ta o mo a ba wa bag bag ke fo bo na se ni wa nya wa sabola yi pe ke na pe is it fine is it not what is it unfair what all this what all this we are dying we are dying we are dying for talk pass me a pen mo sin colonial valors <laughs> Yet, I mean, you say, yes, you need a great chain. Colonial Valos, and I didn't think I was a midi. Maybe I mean, me, to me, and I'm a kind of Bible. Oh, Nassau, who owns Hanadi or Hosoba runs by all runs out for the purpose. So, as you are here. Now, my old romance, I can't say just like that. What do you want to tell me? I'm not saying it's a colonial Valos. Colonial Valos, 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 Colonial
My problem is I'm hungry then. I don't get the place that I will sleep. The spike in Ghana's case count came with growing concerns over how prepared our health facilities were in dealing with the situation. As of the end of April 2020, Ghana's cumulative case count stood at 2,074, recording 17 deaths but had also seen some 212 persons recovered. First, we made an order that all facilities must create an isolation place or a place to quarantine so that if someone came to you have a suspicion you should be able to isolate the person immediately and this was something we had done in H1N one time before and so that created. We also quickly looked at some of our facilities where we could create special places uh, for them. I remember when to Oboise there was a new facility, an old facility. We quickly renovated the place and created a treatment center there with support from the the Obwasi mines, others came in. Um, Kumasi Sa built their own. We were just about to commission, we had just commissioned a new hospital in Ghana East. We decided, oh, look, <laughs> why don't we just dedicate it solely for COVID? And all those things uh, took place. We engaged um, the Pentecost, graciously gave us the Pentecost Convention Center as a isolation place. The Catholic Church gave us a lot of their. They are, they are facilities across the country. For facility, the Football Association gave us the um, Ghana Man Centre for Isolation. So, apart from what the government did in creating new facilities, the private sector and the general public were very, very... I remember a time there were people who called me, we have a house in Sakumono. Please, can you use it for uh, isolation centre? We go there and the community rise, hey, we don't want any COVID case here. I think those were interesting days, but eventually people realized that the stigma was reduced, especially when people started seeing their neighbors get COVID, get, recover and come back home. A pandemic, which many expected to be short-lived, was gradually proving to have a longer life. Government had to intensify its campaign to make Ghanaians aware of what was now considered the new normal by deploring all available tools for information dissemination. Key to the complexities of the lockdown was another reality of the lack of resources which will threaten to pose a challenge on the management of the situation. This need drove the government to deploy resources to the health sector, encouraging private sector organizations to also add their contributions, resulting in a positive collaboration between government and the private sector. partner radio station City FM showed leadership in the media space not just in the area of creating programs platforms to educate and inform the citizenry but were involved in engaging communities with much needed social and material interventions a feat that would later be emulated by other media houses. City TV and City FM um, decided to take center stage in, in the activities um, regarding the, the management of COVID um, because we first of all we consider ourselves as a station of community relevance and so our engagement with our community is very key to all the things we do and so we, we believe that we owe um, the public um, that kind of duty. So with 
we, we, we just rose up to the occasion to do all the things that we did. Um, first of all, as a media house, um, dissemination of information um, from our own sources, from our own research, and then also being part of the um, information ministry's um, uh, regular updates that we're getting. I mean, it's, it's, it started from once a day to twice a day, um, events that they were holding and all the other ones. Um, in addition to that, we quickly had to reorganize our um, programming schedule to make room for inf um, programs that will um, empower people with information regarding COVID-19. Um, uh, you know, a, pan a pandemic that's of, of no particular known identity at the time. So information was of the essence and that's the reason we put up the 3 p.m. Um, COVID special program which happened seven days a week throughout the period. We're doing something called the double negative testing. You test the patient for two weeks. So it's about living cautiously. You want to, you want to have your freedom, but still you exercise some caution without freedom because the disease is not gone yet. The change in numbers we are seeing are coming from the general surveillance. And general surveillance, you know, simply means people who walk to the hospital, people who have symptoms and so report to the hospital are taken to the hospital. We were also privileged to be exposed to a lot of information regarding the COVID because of the way we were involved in. So that led us to the issue of um, um, fumigation, you know, because in the beginning, it wasn't even too clear whether fumigation was the way to go or not to go. And the debate was still raging on, but we took the step. Um, and being a media house, we didn't have the resources. So we had to secure the support of Zoom Lion. And so we partnered Zoom Lion and we started the fumigation exercise. How be it, um, everything was paid for by Zoom Lion. And so we started first with the fumigation of specific markets. And so later we got the municipal um, authorities uh, permission, they cleared the markets and we did that with Zoom Lion. And having visited a few of the markets, in addition to the markets, we also chose to um, look at the tertiary institutions. Another thing that we did, which I think was, was also the, one of the major highlights of our intervention, was try, finding a way to recognize the effort of the frontline workers at the time, because we didn't know the nature of this, and we, we could not um, fathom the, the, the extent to which our frontline workers were being uh, endangered in the process. So we thought that, look, let's put something together to recognize their efforts. So that gave birth to our music concert, virtual music concert, uh, christened Rally Round the Flag. Almighty Infinite Father, faithful in love in your own. Rallying around the flag because we thought it was a clarion call for everybody to put their hearts and minds together, hold the flag up and, and energize Ghanaians to be able to combat this uh, pandemic. There was lockdown and um, transportation, commercial transportation was a problem, especially for frontline workers. 
And at the time, there hadn't been any specific arrangement made for frontline workers. So this is what uh, prompted us to come together and arrange for free buses that will ferry frontline workers uh, to their various homes and destinations. Uh, we mapped out our routes, uh, where they'll be picked, where they'll be, uh, they'll be alighting and all these. And uh, only for, I think, uh, on the eve of this, uh, the commencement, we had a, a route intervention from the Ministry of Transport who decided that we were not qualified to, to help the citizens and uh, they took over only to mess it up later. We also got information vans, um, got material from the Ministry of uh, Information, um, pre-recorded messages, we added our own messages, and we had the information vans at our own expense go around the communities educating people about this COVID and how we can manage and take care of ourselves. So these are some of the interventions that uh, in our own small way, we were able to put together a City FM, City TV, our staff and our patrons um, to make sure that we stayed relevant within this period. This case count had plateaued for a while and eventually saw a downward movement, a situation which will now cause people to call for easing of the COVID-19 restrictions. In view of our ability to undertake aggressive contact tracing of infected persons, the enhancement of our capacity to test, the expansion in the numbers of our treatment and isolation centers, our better understanding of the dynamism of the virus, the ramping up of our domestic capacity to, to produce our own personal protective equipment, sanitizers and medicine. The modest success is chalked in containing the spread of the virus in Accra and Kumasi and the severe impact on the poor and vulnerable. I've taken the decision to lift the three-week-old restriction on movements in the greater Accra metropolitan area and Kaswa, and the greater Kumasi metropolitan area and its contiguous districts. The last quarter of 2020 saw Ghanaians heave a sigh of relief, though we were still not out of the woods. With the numbers declining, various social activities began to pick up. Political activities heralding the 7th December election and the exercise itself led people to throw caution to the wind. Shortly after the elections came Christmas. Although some restrictions were still in force, the declining numbers were a good reason for people to embrace some fun after months of apprehension and uncertainty. By the close of December 2020, Ghana's cumulative case count was 55,168 with 53,928 recoveries, recording 335 deaths, a situation which did not spare prominent Ghanaians. However, this relief was short-lived as the cases started rising rapidly at the beginning of 2021, finishing the month of January with a cumulative count of 68,559, an increase of over 13,000 cases within that short period. Conversations for a lasting approach in dealing with coronavirus intensified 
And just like many other countries battling the virus, Ghana settled on the use of vaccines as its next option. This generated several conversations in public space, especially because of theories and speculation that was rife on various social media platforms. Looking at the news across the world, I mean, I'm a kind of person who really sleeps on social media and there are a lot of things going on that the, the white want to cut the population of we Africans, which is so cruel because this is the way they want to cut that because they say that we are hopeless, there's nothing in us. Regardless of the public skepticism, the country received over 600,000 doses of COVID vaccines in February from the COVAX facility. The many opposing views on the vaccination exercise demanded a strategy to convince the public to take the job and the president led the charge by publicly taking the shot. Unfortunately, scientists in the world have now found what could be a permanent antidote to this, I can only call it a pestilence that has affected all of our lives this last year. It's important that I set the example that this vaccine is safe by being the first to have it so that everybody in Ghana can feel comfortable about taking this vaccine. It is important that everybody at the end of the day is vaccinated and that's our objective. The influential media personalities joined the campaign. We've been given prominence, we've been given a platform. We need to use the influence to rally people for positive causes. That's why you're seeing experienced journalists, some of the the new ones who are doing the frontline interviews being given the doses so that they are public. Because if you are telling people to go and do something, ask you, oh, Mr. Avila, you say I should take the vaccine. Have you, have you taken it? Well, I've taken it, so you can also take it. This was enough to convince the public to get on board. As of March 25, 2021, Ghana's cumulative case count for the coronavirus disease stood at 89,999. 86,621 persons have recovered, with some 737 persons sadly succumbing to the disease. Government is targeting to vaccinate 20 million Ghanaians for herd immunity. So far, about 600,000 have been vaccinated and are awaiting their second job. It is however important to note that a battle against the unseen enemy, the unexpected visitor who threatened to overstay its welcome, COVID-19, is still on and winning this war requires a collective effort that begins with you.